you won't miss a trick when it comes to uh, finance and football right now because the man who's continually right across the lot uh, joins uh, Dan and myself and Troy in studio and of course I'm talking about former advisor to Manchester City if ever this man could be described as an expert on FFP that's an understatement Stefan Barson joins us live in studio Stefan how have you been it's been a long time good it's been a while busy summer Busy summer, busy <laughs> summer. We were away in Germany for so long and now we're back and it seems uh, as if we've never really been away. So much to get through. We'll get to Manchester City in a moment because as you'll know, Stefan, uh, Julian Alvarez has departed the club off to Atletico Madrid, 75 million euros up front, rising to 95 million. It's a club record sale. In general though, profit and sustainability rules, PRS, not long ago we were asking, had it killed the window? Are we seeing uh, signs of recovery this summer, would you say? Uh, I wouldn't say so just yet. Uh, I mean, obviously, this the Alvarez deal is a step change um, in terms of the, the business that's been done. But I had a look earlier, actually, just in terms of number of transactions over 20 million euros across Europe, 46. That's it. Right? Only four players over, I think it was over 28, only four players. Right? So this is all about, there's a few player, younger players Mainly Premier League, one Saudi deal over 20 million euros. One. One. Okay, so you've got... So what do you read into that? Well, you've got... There's just very few teams that have got... Recession and football. <laughs> well, I think, there is, I, I, think, I think it is a football recession. Yeah, you know, is. so if you look at what's happened in France with the TV deal, yeah. so you've got France almost out of the market. We've had good investment from Lyon. Yeah. Uh, they bought a couple of Nottingham Forest players. Um, so... You know, slightly odd fees that have been paid there. We'll probably talk about that later. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you mean odd? Well, uh, we'll get to that. Well, quite, you quite big right. for twenty-eight-year-old players. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, you've got Marseille who've spent a bit. Yeah. But but generally, France is out of the market. Mm -hmm. uh, Germany is largely out of the market except for Bayern. Yeah. So as you've, usual. Even, you've even got Dortmund, who you know obviously had a great season last season, but uh, um, not spending big. Um, you've got uh, Italy that's doing a few intra-Italian deals, and then you've got the Premier League who have not really kicked off yet, you know, aside from West Ham. And West Ham have only really done it because they've just got so much capacity mm -hmm. from the financial uh, fair play perspective yeah. on the PSR basis, driven almost solely by the sale last year of, of, of Rice. Mm -hmm. So th they've got loads of capacity, so there's no worries there. They can, they, they and can, Saudi they can are spend. one and done. Last summer, Saudi like came out of the gates and steamed in and spent all this money. Yeah, and now I've gone a year later. What were we doing? You so, know, and and here we are. Well, well, there's there's two things going on. I think I think there's partly a reassessment in terms of what mm -hmm. they bought last summer, yeah. but I think secondly, a lot of the clubs have got caps on the number of mm -hmm. foreign players they can have. So even if they wanted to bring in some of the Premier League players, yeah, and really, you know, everybody hopes if you're sitting in the boardrooms at, at most of these clubs now, you hope that. Saudi effectively bails you out of some of the most expensive yeah. mistakes mm -hmm. or older players. Why don't Saudi change that rule? Because the guy, at, Sa the, the guy at Saudi trying. spends all this money and mm -hmm. then they put a cap in on the amount of foreign players they sign. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like contradictory. It is, yeah. And they could change it. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're talking, they are overnight. talking about changing it though, aren't they? Yeah. That's, that's the, it, the it's fast. The Do you think anyone's going to go at the end of the window? I, I think the last few days of the window could be the busiest in two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, People are almost like... Why, why did you say that? I just something I said to my manager this morning. I looked at it. I think seventy percent of EFL clubs haven't spent the transfer fee. Mm -hmm. I, if I'm wrong, quote me on that. You know, we're the second biggest spenders in League One after Birmingham, mm -hmm. and obviously we've done some good trading the other way as well. And I'm looking at even clubs coming down. There ain't like Leeds are waiting. Mm -hmm. I think Leeds, for example, are clearing the decks. I think they had to bring in was it a hundred million? Yeah. But I think Leeds will have a right go near the end. They did it last year. Leeds a little bit left it late. I just have this sense that the last two days of the window is going to go cuckoo. People will be clearing the decks, getting what they need to get. What do you think, Stephen? You, you're, you're in the know. Should we strap ourselves in? Uh, well, Dara's more in the know than me, but uh, <laughs> I could be wrong. Uh, uh, no, I, I think you'll have high volume, but mm. low high volume in terms of number of players yeah. moving. Sure, but low total volume yeah. in terms yeah. of yeah. blockbuster transfers. Feet. Yeah, I, I just think there's not a lot of cash around, uh, mm. and you know people are nervous about uh, financial fair play. Yeah. Right, but but moreover, they're just nervous about revenues. You know, if you look at the situation with TV deals, we may well be at the end of the ever-increasing TV deal. Certainly domestically, that looks like looks mm -hmm. the case. You've got the European deals that are becoming very challenging. It's not just in France. It's in Germany and it's in Italy as well. That's why you've got to grow the game. I was and, saying it yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
you've, you've clearly got to do that. And th But then on top of it, we've also got the issue on commercial revenues, yeah. which are twofold. One, you've got the betting situation mm -hmm. where all of that money is going to come out of the game over the next two years. Yeah. And then layered on top of that, the blue chips don't seem to want to take particularly front of shirt. So if you look at around Europe, and it's not just, uh, obviously we know Chelsea, but it's not just here. Uh, I don't think Juve have got a front of shirt sponsor mm -hmm. yet for, for the new season. Juventus. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. extraordinary. A giant. Yeah. A yes. giant. Yeah. And they can't, yeah. they can't get the kind of 30, 40 million quid they need. Just yeah. on what you were saying there, Doug, do you think the Euros plays an effect in that? Because uh, it goes uh, so long Troy, that everyone goes we, and we, we had a nightmare this summer. Yeah. We used to do our deals like the end of May, start of June. So yeah. when the window opens, we get players in, Gaffer has them to train, camp, yeah, yeah. all that. Yeah. We had a nightmare in three or four deals, particularly from the Prem and Champ certain yeah. players because these clubs had half their squads available when they reported back because they yes. were at the Euros they were Cup America yeah, they were yeah, all yeah. playing wherever else and even now today we signed a Man City boy we did that deal on June the 1st mm -hmm. and we've had to wait to nine weeks yeah, because yeah. Pep didn't have all his players out in America so this boy went with him yeah, yeah, so we yeah, had to wait right, till they got right. home on a flight on Sunday night from America yeah. for the boy then to come and join us to play next yeah, yeah, Saturday. Yeah. Right. Always, so it's been a bit like that. I, it's always been find, I always think, again, I don't know as much as you sure. guys, but just optics is whenever there's a big tournament, absolutely, everything gets, it gets yeah, delayed. Yeah, 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 back. Gets try, I've, got, I've, I've got to say, Troy, I wish I was sitting where you are because when this man comes into the studio, Mr. Borson, and opens that laptop, <laughs> I tell you, there's a mine of information there that we want to get out of. The, him, and the we'll only do that difference now. is I've got respect and I would have never read it. You would be straight <laughs> on. That's the difference. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> you over there, take a photo. And send me across the desk. We'll take I a quick break because, that, Stephen, when we come back, Everton fans are looking for an update. Now, Stefan's just Ooh. the man. We're going to talk Manchester City, of course we are, and we'll talk about the impact as and when Conor Gallagher is dispatched uh, in the same direction as Julian Alvarez to uh, Atletico Madrid. Stay with us. It's quarter to 11. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.